Hi guys, this is Shanna Mann at Central Virginia Prep. I just wanted to give you my annual reminder about global editions and Indian editions and why we recommend that you don't use them. So there are a few things you need to know about the global editions. So Amazon does allow you to sell global editions on their platform. Um, you can usually tell which ones those are because the ASIN starts with a nine. Now, this will be different than, this is because the ISBN 10 is usually the ASIN. And keep this in mind because this is going to be important later when you're starting to track down problematic listings. So, for almost all books, you know, the ones that are, uh, the listings that are created by the publisher or at the behest of the publisher or whatever, the ISA, ASIN is the same as the ISBN 10, except when it's not. But for the most part, it is. And um, if we refer to this typically as the canonical listing. So the other thing you want to pay attention to is sometimes listings start with a B0. And those are product listings. And anywhere else on Amazon, the listings for furniture and housewares and toys and all that other stuff, if you look at them, you'll notice that their ASINs are almost always B0. This is the product designation on Amazon. So when Amazon started cracking down and gating a lot of textbooks, what people did um, not like you specifically, but enterprising sellers would just go ahead and create a new listing for the book that they wanted to sell that they were gated out of on the canonical listing. So they're allowed to sell that book now because they're not gated on it. But what you need to understand is what happens behind the scenes. So the reason that all the gatings occurred was that the publishers started to lean on Amazon and try to shut down listings where they had reason to believe that there was counterfeit action going on, or just generally lean on Amazon. It is up in the air about how much proof that they were required to provide. Additionally, Amazon periodically goes through and merges the listings of books that seem to be duplicates. They do this for all of their products. So this is where you'll see, uh, for older books that have been in print for a long time, particularly um, classics, children's books, the sorts of things that you might sell for literature classes like Old Man in the Sea. If, if the particular edition of Old Man in the Sea that you're selling has been in print since 1958, then probably at some point Amazon was like, you know what, these are all the same. ISBN, let's roll them all together. And that's when you start to see a lot of listings that say something like different cover than listing. Technically not kosher, but Amazon kind of lets that one slide. The used book um, part of Amazon gets away with a lot of crap. And I suspect Amazon's not thrilled with the fact that they get, get away with a lot of crap. But at the same time, used books are kind of this gray market area where uh, there's just so much, too much variation to really effectively uh, crack down on all of this stuff. So let, uh, I want you to know that these merged listings happen. When they happen, you can wind up being at odds with what the description says, and then you can get a complaint from the customer. So that is why, in general, it is better to be on the canonical listing if at all possible, because then you know that that canonical listing matches your book in every regard, and the fact that you're not gated from it means that uh, when the next time that they rake in all of the um, multiple listings, it's not going to get gated, and it basically just solves a lot of problems for you. Leaning me back to the global edition. So we have two problems with the global editions. The first is that they're often sold under the canonical listing where they don't belong. So you'll have the global edition for 
I don't know, some engineering, to, uh, Horngren's Accounting. You'll have the Global Edition for Horngren's Accounting sold under the American Student Edition for Horngren's Accounting. And that's wrong. That's bad. Don't do it. And if you see that you thought you were buying the American edition and you got the global or the Indian edition, then make sure you get a refund on that book. Recently, we've been seeing a lot of global edition listings pop up and some of the checkers are more um, on top of that than others, where they'll be like, hey, okay, I noticed that this ASIN that is listed in the spreadsheet starts with a nine, so this is a global edition, but it's supposed to be a global edition, and that's okay. And sometimes they'll flag them anyway. The reason we do this is because, like, if you do a lot of volume, it seems like you're an experienced seller, we're gonna be like, okay, he meant to do that. He bought that book knowing it was a global edition, totally fine with selling global editions. If you're new, and green and not selling a lot, we infer from that that you don't didn't probably didn't attend to sell a global edition, don't really know what the deal is with global editions, and so we'll flag that in red for you. So here's the deal with global editions. You are allowed to sell global editions. However, the publishers don't like it when you sell global editions on the US Amazon site. So periodically they'll go through and they'll strong arm Amazon into shutting down those listings. When those listings get shut down, your inventory gets stranded, you can't sell it, you have to have it shipped back to you or to us. This causes time and expense and you're not gonna get that inventory back. Then some enterprising seller goes along, creates a new listing for the same global edition book and then that listing goes live for a while, it's not gated, everybody sells on it, it's all copacetic until the next time that it gets shut down. So, in general, I like to tell new sellers that while you can sell global editions, the main attraction to flipping textbooks on Amazon is that it's a relatively simple and uh, headache-free system. That selling global editions does not really incorporate well into that. If, you, if all you want to do is flip textbooks, bang, 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 not cause yourself any problems, not have stranded inventory, then probably stay away from global editions. If you're like, no, I'm totally on top of this maintenance. I got a VA. They're very good. Um, I don't mind if I have to pull the odd inventory because I know my numbers and I know that I can sell that book in a reasonable time period. This is all A-OK -okay with me. Then Global editions are totally fine. We don't have a problem with it, as long as you're selling it on the global edition listings, which as I stated before, typically start with a nine in their ASIN. So I get a lot of questions about what are global editions? What's the problem here? Why can't I sell them? What's the big deal? Uh, I thought it wasn't supposed to be a global edition and it is a global edition. So the thing is, do your own due diligence on these listings. And sometimes it is not listed on the listing that it is a global edition. You'll be able to flag it in two ways. As I said, the, the ASIN will start with a nine or very, um, or you'll be able to see in the image on the listing, the Amazon listing, that in the top corner next to the spine, there will be a little red triangle. That little red triangle is where it says, mm, you know, Indian edition or whatever, not authorized for sale in the United States. So if you see that in the image, then you know you're dealing with a global edition. If you wanna sell the global edition, again, totally fine, just as long as it's on the right listing and you're prepared potentially for a headache down the road as Amazon seems to purge these listings every year or six months, depending on how, how big the pr proliferation of these listings is. So I realize that there's a lot of ins and outs here. That's why I decided to make a video about all of the potential variations on the global editions uh, problem. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, hit reply to this email. I'll do my best to sort it out. And hopefully there won't be as many emails about this issue if I get it put to bed and, and uh, explain things in a video format. So hope this is helpful.